An alien being has come to live with us and eat our cans and snack on our cat. You got a cat? You eat cats? You can't eat Lucky. No. He's quick. I'll give him that. The dogs, they're eating the cats. Eat the cat. Eat, eat the cat. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. Eat the cat. <laughs> that's my jam <laughs> what's going on party people what is going on it's your ride share extraordinaire your super duper uber drivers here guys yeah boy <laughs> yeah you guys you already know the deal before you hop in my ride do me a favor hit the like hit that subscribe poor fave four <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in, buckle in, and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. What are we talking about today, folks? Man, oh man. All right, it's story time. When I was younger, I would join the military and my first station was Fort Polk, Louisiana. And um, my platoon sergeant was Sergeant Boudreaux. He was a native of Louisiana and he took a liking to me. One day we out in the field and um, we were going across this uh, this little river here and we see these little mud bugs hopping in the water. You know, I'm 18, 19 at a time. I'm looking like, ugh, what the hell is that? Mr. Brujo, Sergeant Brujo said, mmm, mud bugs. And I'm looking at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? So Brujo says, you never had mud bugs before? I'm like, hell no, I ain't eating that shit. So later on that week, he took me and a couple of our um, peers here to dinner. And we went to a little dive bar that serve mud bugs. Okay, so he comes out with his big bag full of bugs. All right, so he's showing us how to eat these bugs. You uh eat the tail and suck the head, right? I know, it's kind of uh, <laughs> sexualized, I know. So after a few, you know, he's eating them, showing us how to eat these things. I'm looking like, this is gross, man. So I tried it anyway. And I fell in love with crawfish. Crawfish was delicious. All right. It was nice and spicy. We had the beers at the time and it went down pretty good. It had corn, potatoes, and I was just over there eating tail, sucking head. Okay. Pause. No ditty. Now, after that, he showed me some other delicacies in Louisiana. So I had some alligator. I had frog legs. I've had, um, Turtle soup, ugh, that was gross. I had oysters. Oysters are gross. I don't care what nobody says. Those shit are, ugh. But I had those anyway. I had rabbit. Rabbit was pretty, pretty interesting. What? It was cool. So I expand my taste buds in Louisiana. I had a lot of weird stuff out there. Now, one day we out there in the field, and I saw this big old rat running across the telephone wire. And I'm like, what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> what is that? And Boudreaux's like, mmm, Nutra. And I'm looking like, oh, hell no, nah, nigga. I'm not eating that shit. I am not eating no whatever you call it, Nutra. Hell no. Nah. I drew the line right there. But Boudreaux was telling me when he was growing up in Louisiana, he had a lot of interesting dishes like squirrel, raccoons, possum, all this stuff that you hear like oh these white folks do eat this shit. a lot of people in the south a lot of poor white people eat these snakes Ugh. you know so it's not far fetched to believe that poor people will eat anything to survive so donald trump goes around and says that immigrants are coming from other parts of the world and eating Pets, cats and dogs, and you people are going crazy. Now, I know some folks that will not eat Chinese food because they believe the Chinese eat cats and dogs and they put it in their meals. They have that belief. 
but it's okay for you to say that about Asian folks eating cats and dogs. You have no problem with them saying that. But you say Haitians will eat cat and dog, you go and flip out. Haiti is one of the poorest country on this side of the hemisphere. You're telling me that all they eat is chicken and beef and fish, right? The poorest people out here, and that's all they eat. Right. I got another one for you. I met a Mexican uh, national, and he got in my car, and we were talking, and I told him I'm from Miami, and he loved Florida. And he said, you ever had iguana? I said, nah, I never had an iguana as a pet. Those things freak me out. No, 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 not as a pet. Have you ever had them for dinner? I'm looking like, what, what? the fuck are you talking about? Iguana? Hell no. Come to find out, the Mexicans, they love iguanas. <laughs> I wouldn't even touch an iguana as a pet, but these motherfuckers sit there and boil them, skin them alive, and put them in a taco. But it's okay. You can say that about them, that the iguanas, you will say, oh, that's their culture. But you say Haitian eat cats and dogs. You say, hell no. It's impossible for them to do that because what? They're black, right? Now, if you go to Haiti and you go to the street foods, they got folks out here selling cookies in the streets. Okay. I had those cookies before. Those shit taste like shit. But those cookies are made out of dirt. Right? Now, people in Miami, the young folks, the young Haitians, the Generation X, who never been to Haiti, never had dirt cookies. That's say that's impossible. Haitians don't eat dirt. They have dirt cookies. They look a lot like pancakes or cookies. The recipe passed down from generations here in Haiti. Women spend entire days making them. Grandmothers, daughters, and younger girls. Infants are nursed while mothers work the mix. Kids seem to enjoy them, at least when our camera was around. But these patties, known as bonbon terres by the Haitians who eat them, are a grim reminder of just how poor this Caribbean nation is. They aren't sweet, they're hard to swallow, and add almost nothing in terms of nutrition. Because the cookies are actually made of dirt. Okay, the poorest nation on this side of the hemisphere and it's, it's so far for you to believe that they'll eat dirt cookies. All right, let's stay on Miami. Miami, they got Cuban nationals that would kidnap horses and sell horse meats out in the streets, like this young guy here. Sky 10 over at the Hialeah farm where detectives were still rummaging through the property. 70-year-old Manuel Cotto Martinez is now in jail, charged with illegally selling horse meat. It was a secret informant who told police what was happening. On November 10th, an undercover detective claims he bought 20 pounds of horse meat for $140 from Cotto Martinez. The suspect was told the horse meat was for a child with anemia. Apparently, it is a common belief horse meat can cure or help people with that ailment. So if Cubans and Honduras can eat horse meat, we think that's gross. To them, they think it's a delicacy. But you won't say nothing about that unless it's a Haitian. If you say Haitian eat cats and dogs, you flip out. You got 100,000 Haitians from a poor country, uneducated and don't know the laws of the United States. You're telling me that none of those people don't even do voodoo. They don't do no animal sacrifice. They don't do no eating cats and dogs. They don't behead chickens and none of that. 100,000 folks from a third world country, none of them is doing that. But you're running around and just because David Muir from the debate says, told us there have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals within the immigrant community. You believe what he says other than what the residents of Ohio said and what Trump says. You're saying that no Haitians in Ohio has eaten a cat. <laughs> No Haitians in Ohio has kidnapped and and beheaded a geese from the waterfalls. None of them did that. Because what? They're black. That's beneath them. You got folks in Philippines. The Philippine people 
will eat a baby bird in a shell for breakfast. They call it balut. A fucking baby bird with the feathers, the head, and the eyes right before it hatches. They serve it up for breakfast. They eat it whole. Over there, it's street food. Over here is a delicacy. You find it here, it's at least 40 bucks for the goddamn one egg. Over there, it's like two pennies. But that's okay for them to do that. You don't think that's gross. You people are hilarious. There's a new form of racism here in America. It's not what you do, it's who says it. All right? For instance, Barack Obama could say the exact same thing that Trump said. That Haitian migrants are eating cats and dogs and geese and ducks. If he had said that yesterday, all you folks would be like, oh my God, we need to do something to help these migrants out. Trump said he's a racist. That's the problem right here. That's the problem. Y'all saying that the Haitians are so, so honorable and beyond eating a rat, a cat. A dog. We have folks in Peru. People in Peru eat fucking guinea pigs. We see guinea pigs as a cute little pet. Those motherfuckers eat that shit for dinner. So anywhere around the world, poor people will eat anything to survive. Okay? Nigerians. Nigerians, they eat motherfucking monkeys. They eat bush meat. You know what a bush meat is? Bush meat is a fucking bat. Or any rodent that comes out the bush. The uh, grass cutter. Grass cutter look like a fucking neutral. But that's a delicacy. Here, we think it's gross. The same way that Indians don't eat beef, they think cows are sacred. You got folks in Nigeria eat cow brains. What? Cow brains, folks. I eat everything on the cow, from oxtail to the to the snout. But I'm not eating no f***ing cow tongue. I'm not eating no cow brains, cow heart. But so there's some people that does that. You got some American folks that eat goddamn chitlins. I never had chitlins in my four years of living. Never had chitlins before. You motherfuckers are eating shit. But the Haitians, the Haitians cannot possibly eat cats and dogs because they're so beyond that. All they do is eat chicken and beef. That's it. And fish. Right. Right. You people are hilarious. Just because Donald Trump said it, he's a racist. But everybody else, you can say that Chinese folk eat cats and have no problem with it. You could go on YouTube right now. You see Asian folks eating bat soup. Everybody said that we had COVID because of people eating bat soup and had no problems with it. Trump says that Trump is a racist. Trump is a xenophobe because he said bat soup or uh, kung flu. He's a racist. But among the black folks, we make jokes about, yeah, these motherfuckers eat bat soup and that's how we got the COVID. It had no problem saying that. This is the problem. This is the problem. This is new racism. Whoever says it and depends who said it, they're the racist. Golly, you folks are hilarious. Anyway, that's my thought for the day. Saying all these good food got me a little hungry here. I'm going to have some balut. Ugh. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you Haitians, get your ass off my lawn.